So our, our sense of fairness, it starts out really early. It turns out that even babies can pretty much sense uh, when something is unjust, unfair. There was a pod of teachers, of four-year-olds, that got tired of fielding, you know, the, the constant um, complaints about the just standard injustices that happen during the course of a day. So they installed a um, tattle phone in the classroom. And when one of the one of the children would come to them about, you know, uh, Rufus growled at me, um, the teacher would say, well, tell it to the tattle phone. So the tattle phone became really popular um, and the children used it a lot. One of the dads uh, uh, in that classroom was a journalist and he asked, he was intrigued by this, and he asked the, um, the teachers and all the parents for permission to record these conversations. And you can hear uh, the result of that on uh, a podcast. It's called This American Life. It's by Ira Glass. Uh, it's, it's very, very sweet and very um, insightful. But the phone, the phone that he installed, it was a big red you know, phone that you could pick up the receiver, like an old fashioned phone. You could pick up the receiver and a recorded message would come on and it would say, hey there, you've reached the tattle phone. Okay. Tell me what happened after the beep. Tell me the whole story. Uh, and the children did. I mean, day after day. Um, you know, Ellie told me a lie. Seamus wasn't sharing with me, and I don't like it, and I'm very upset. Nathan farted in my face, and I, and, and I said, yuck, Nathan. But, but it turns out that the real crime wasn't the farting in the face. It was um, that he didn't say, excuse me. It, it turns out that our evolutionary cousins, the primates, you know, have the same innate sense of fairness and justice. A few years ago, two zoologists at Emory University conducted this experiment because they wanted to see, you know, what, what, where does this sense of fairness come from? Is it a cultural add-on? Or is it pretty much hardwired into us? So they designed this experiment using capuchin monkeys and they put them in cages, you know, um, side by side so that they could see each other. And they trained them if they, um, they trained them to, the monkeys to give their handlers a rock. And in return, they would get a chunk of cucumber, which the monkeys adored. So this was a very, you know, all very satisfactory to the monkeys. They would give out a, a rock, they would get a cucumber and uh, plugging along happily, but then the handlers changed things up. The first monkey gave his rock, got his cucumber, and then watched as the second mon monkey gave his rock and got a grape. Now a grape, it turns out in monkey world, is, um, you know, like caviar or fi very fine wine. So the first monkey seeing this is very, very like excited that, oh boy, he's going to get a grape too. So he hands out his rock and gets a chunk of cucumber. <coughs> Not only that, to make matters worse, the handler gives the second monkey um, a grape for free. The first monkey is so upset throws the cucumber in the handler's face. He bangs on the walls of the cage. He throws his rocks all over the place. He makes furious gestures at the second monkey. Hardwired in. You can see it on YouTube if you just uh, Google capuchin monkey fairness experiment. Unfairness registers big time with us. So, when God asked Jonah this question, is it right for you to be angry that I'm compassionate with these evil people? His answer is yes, and ours would be too. Isn't it right? Isn't it right to be angry when mercy is extended to killers? Isn't it right to be angry when, when people who break the world, break the rules, do not get the comeuppance that they deserve? I mean, isn't it right to be angry when our cherished assumptions of justice are challenged by grace that seems reckless and wasteful? 
Now, one thing I, you know, I love about this story, I've already alluded to it, but God does not scold Jonah uh, for, for his anger. He, he, you know, he attempts to broaden at Jonah's horizons. For, because, you know, these Assyrians are, they are everything Jonah believes them to be. They are violent, they are mean, um, they are wicked, uh, but they are also more. They are also more. They are a great city, God says, and they don't know their right hand from their left. In other words, they are human beings. They're made in God's image, and they are lost and broken. And what they deserve is really neither here nor there. Because what they need, what they need is compassion. What they deserve is neither here nor there. What they need is compassion. That's pretty much the same equation that is, that is operating in Jesus' parable. Now, a lot of us have devoted considerable time uh, towards the effort uh, to secure equal pay for equal work. So I am not denigrating unions or women's organizations. I mean, far from it. Actually, if all the workers in that vineyard organized and cooperated with each other rather than griping with each other, uh, they would all benefit. But Jesus is introducing us to a whole new economy here. And it's one that's not based on merit and it is uh, not based on what one deserves. It is based upon what one needs. And what is needed for all of those workers is a living wage, enough to sustain them, to sustain their life for them and their family. That's what a denarius is. It's a day's wages. It, it is enough to sustain a small household for another day. What is needed is fair distribution for everyone, enough for everyone. What is needed is to be needed, to be wanted, to be included. I, re I related this parable one time uh, to a group who just really, really hit back at me. And they said that, I don't know where you're reading that from, but that cannot be in the Bible. Uh, it is in the Bible. And there's a lot of other things in the Bible that are, you know, do not, just do not support our sense of what's right and what's wrong. A lot of things that do not support what currently passes as Christianity, but is actually just a certain cultural way of thinking. Um, I mean, the Bible is extraordinarily clear over and over again uh, that those who are on the margins of society, the poor, uh, are to be the differently abled, um, the ones we see as other are to be taken care of as a matter of public policy, not just by the generosity of individual donors. The Bible is extraordinarily clear that those who are alien are to be welcomed and included um, regardless of how they got here. Jesus is forever sitting down and eating and parting with the wrong people, and his stories are scandalous and they are offensive. Because, because my friends, it is in the nature of parables, uh, not to comfort us, uh, but to lift us up and out of our cultural assumptions, out of our inherited assumptions about the way things work. I mean, to make us question everything that we thought was true. It's in the nature of Jesus's parables uh, to explode, right? To explode our black and white thinking and to cause us to get more subtle, more subtle in our analysis and more comfortable with operating in the gray area. They cause us, they cause us to expand our horizons and our consciousness. So there's so many reasons not to recommend anything by the comedian Louis C.K. I mean, politically, totally not correct. Um, so I do not recommend him. 
but but he does have a skit that speaks so directly to our theme today that I am going to risk uh, relating it. His young daughter is totally incensed that her brother got the one Otter Pop that was left. I don't know, she was out of the room or something when this Otter Pop got given out to her brother. It is not fair. She says it over and over again, and no matter what he says, it doesn't matter. It's just not fair, she says. Finally, he gets down at eye level with her, and he looks at her, and he says, you know, the only reason, the only reason to look into somebody else's bowl is just to make sure that they have enough. The only reason to look into somebody else's bowl and to see what somebody else got is to make sure that they got enough. Of course, he ends up finding a treat and giving it to her and telling her, you know, be sure you share it with your, with your brother. The Bible starts out with this truth. We are our brother's keeper. Even if the laborers or the newcomers or the undocumented just got here, just got here, they need enough to live on just as much as we do. And even if the Ninevites or whomever fill in the blank is to the current enemy, even if they are our enemy, they are still God's children. And they are just as lost and just as broken as we are and just as in need of compassion. Okay, so to bring this, bring this into really clear focus, COVID and climate change, pandemic and fires and floods, and the, you know, the increasingly clear burden of racism that our brown and black brothers carry. It, it is all of that is one real life parable. Uh, that we, with the point that we are all in this together, we sink or swim together. Every single one of us is wholly dependent on each other for survival and well-being. It might not be apparent, but what happens in the inner city of Los Angeles affects the gated communities of Santa Monica. What happens in Ecuador affects Sao Paulo, it affects Paris, it affects Salinas. There really, there really and truly is no safety for any of us unless there is safety for all of us. So what's fair for me isn't good enough if it leaves you in the darkness. And my sense of justice is not just if it mocks the tender heart of God. The vineyards, the vineyards of this world, they only thrive when everyone, everyone has a place of dignity and purpose. So the truth that's being lived out, in, I mean, right in our lifetime, is that the time for all of our selfish and stingy notions of fairness, that time is over. So my friends, let, let these biblical questions work on you, not to shame you, but to center you, to help center you more and more in the peace and the power of God's kingdom. These are the questions. Is it right for you to be angry because God chooses to be compassionate. Are you envious because God is generous? Hmm. Let us pray. All compassionate God, your generosity towards others, your compassion even for our enemies, uh, threatens our sense of what is right and just and fair. Move us, we beg you, move us closer to your way of seeing the world. Help us to live closer to your heart. Grant us the will to enact policies that ensure adequate distribution of goods and dignity and worth. We pray, we pray that you will invade our lives and our church, 
uh, with your Holy Spirit and make of us a people who live by your word and abide in the fullness of your power. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen.